Hey everyone, Nicolas Brass here to introduce you to the Waterpipes Virtual Instrument. This is an instrument I have in mind for years. The principle is quite simple. You take a piece of pipe, you put one end of the pipe into water, and you hit the pipe. The water will block the end of the pipe, and the idea is to get a soft fixation for the pipe, so when you hit it, it moves into the water. I draw many versions of this instrument, but it's always a mess. Difficult to play, difficult to record, a lot of time and a lot of water to tune those instruments. Those versions don't have a reason to exist. So I didn't build them. But as a virtual instrument, it is perfect. I just need one bucket of water, some pipes and sleeves, and I can sample four chromatic octaves. With this small pipe, I can already have one octave, I can choose the pitch movement of the note with the strength in my left hand. Small movement. Large movement. And to get lower notes, I just need another piece of pipe with a sleeve. To deep sample this instrument, I put a drone for every semitone in my headphones. And I recorded around 200 tries for each note, trying to be in tune with my pipe. Hey everyone, my name is Dan Shimolinski. People like to call me Shimmy, and you can too. I am a bassist, sound designer, and composer living in Los Angeles, and we are back checking out another fun one, a quirky one, a small but powerful one. This is Water Pipes. Now I'm sure Nicholas has done a much better job than I would do telling you all about this specific instrument, how it was created, how this part was created. So I'm just gonna dive straight in and get into what you get with the Water Pipes library. There is just one part in Water Pipes, but one is all you need because it is a full spectrum, full range version of this amazing instrument and the round robin velocity stuff just attention to detail is absolutely incredible there's all kinds of fun variants in here that you're gonna really really enjoy so I'm gonna go ahead and play you this part straight down from top to bottom and let's check it out I love how it gets slappier and slappier the lower you go. I mean, that is just the, the coolest sounding thing. One thing I wanna point out is the variance from note to note based on where you are in the round robin cycle, how hard you're hitting the key. It's quite pronounced. It really captures the characteristic of the instrument that the pitch might not perfectly be in the center. It might waver a little sharp or flat from the note that you are pushing on the keyboard. I will show you that now. Let's just pick a random C and I will try it at different velocities and give you just kind of a understanding of the variance that we have in the round robin cycle. So I will try to play the same velocity at first just to give you an idea of the round robins. And then if I start kind of varying how hard I'm hitting the key, the difference becomes even more pronounced. And that's one single note. Isn't that cool? So it's a quirky one, but if you are into slight variance in your parts, making things sound more organic, if you're into experimentation, experimental instruments, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. And I had a ton of fun creating these programs. I did 10 of them for this library, weirdly ending up in like the electronic music, like club scene style sound. I don't know what it is about pipes, but you know, there's kind of a sort of cliche hollow pipe effect in a lot of that style of music. And I tried to recreate some of those here, starting with my favorite, which is called Chorus Bass. I've got three layers here, all slightly detuned. We've got one down an octave from the other one, and then we've got one that's six semitones up to kind of create an overtone effect, going through a chorus and a distortion unit as well. 
And this is chorus bass. Right? Like that is the sound. That is the sound of that genre. It's like, it's, it's, I don't know. I never really put my finger on it until this. I was like, why am I hearing dance music, club music? And it's kind of where I ended up. In our matrix, you can see I just changed the range of the chorus, which is kind of a neat way to get sort of a like phasey effect and just really kind of, without necessarily increasing your dynamic, increase the interestingness factor of your sound. And also just a little bump in the distortion on the digital unit. Further emphasizing the clubbing thing, I did one with a little bit of a sequence here that I like a lot, and it's got some nice treatment. It's going through a ladder filter, compressor, a quick digital delay, and then going into a plate reverb. And I'm pretty pleased with how this came out. Very cool. This one's called Deep Drum. It's just a single hit, one note same. Tried to create a very, very dark, almost water drum kind of sound. I've got an LFO going to the pitch of my second part here to kind of give it that modulation, almost like water sound to it. And then I also have a digital reverb, which you can turn on or off depending on if you want it. Also have CC1 mapped to the frequency of that LFO and also just the general pitch, I think, of Oh, up here, the master pitch up here. So you can really kind of move it to kind of change the pitch. It's a pretty cool part. And let's try that reverb. Yeah. This one's called Fluty Add 2. It is an add to voicing here. That's the chord I went for. And I also backed off the attack on all these parts. I found that you actually get kind of a fluty sound when you do that with the water pipes. And it's really, really nice, really pretty through a little sequence in the ARP section to show you what it's all about. Yeah, so I did a reverse behavior on the attack that I was talking about so that when you raise the mod wheel, it actually becomes a little more percussive. So I wanted to give you that option if you wanted to change the beginning of it, but I really like the soft kind of sensitive timbre of moving the attack a little bit later on these parts. This is another program that kind of works with that same thing. I just kind of tune these to notes that I liked, put it through a nice shimmer reverb, and it gives you quite a magical sound.
That shimmer reverb never fails to make me smile. I love all the harmonic modulating stuff that's going on in there. Just super, super pretty. I have the CC going to the wet dry to the point where you can actually get it up to 100% shimmer reverb if you want it, which I did in there. It's kind of a cool sound. Moving right along, this is a main part, and I did this one for Trolls. I know he likes to have at least one part that's really treated nice with an EQ, maybe a little compression, a little bit of reverb, and so that's what I tried to do here. No restrictions on the notes, it's just the library, and just a little bump kind of where I liked it, and I think I gave you some, yeah, I gave you some CC control over that top high shelf. That's gonna obviously give you a brighter sound as you want to kind of give a dynamic shift to the sound or to the part as you're working with it. So simple, just a little bit of bright dark control there. Nice EQ, nice compression, nice reverb. You're good to go. This was kind of one that I <laughs> am showing my bias towards synthesizers here. I got kind of a modular sort of sound from the sequence and I really went with it. I'm using two distortion units here, one analog, one digital, which comes in on the mod wheel. And then I've got some fun EQ action. This is doing absolutely nothing right now because the gain is at zero. But once you bring the gain up with mod wheel, it kind of just gives a resonance in that like 1K to 3K range that's moving all around. And I thought that was a really cool sound. So this is called Modular Grunge. Kind of sounds like modular synthesizers, right? <laughs> it's a resonant instrument. So, you know, that could totally be some big, beefy, fat square waves going into a distortion unit. I love it. It's super, super fun. Moving on to pan flute. This is just really utilizing that kind of slower attack on this to really, truly get kind of a flute sound. I did a nice little sequence here, which I will play for you now. Yeah. So like before, I did a reverse action towards the attack of that part to the mod wheel. So it becomes more harsh attack once you raise the mod wheel up. So that's really, really neat. This one's called phaser bass. And I just tried to create like a nice big two octave beefy bass tone here. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I like it a lot. I hope you do too. And then finally, you know I had to do it. I mean, <laughs> just put a nice ladder filter with some high resonance on there, some nice EQ treatment, and tried to get the closest to the legendary popcorn sound and see if it worked. Close, close enough for jazz, as I like to say.
So yeah, those are the programs that you get with water pipes. And now I just want to talk about this from a practical standpoint because, okay, this is not the most useful library you can purchase for sound paint. This is not like a must have. It definitely falls into the auxiliary category for me. But it is super useful and I just want to talk about how I went about making some of these programs and just kind of a couple things to bear in mind when you are diving into water pipes. I'm going to clear out here and just pull up the main part. We might end up making something, I don't know, but I just want to talk kind of more broad spectrum about what this is and what it can be used for. So on programs where I kind of wanted to rein in the pitch, I really went key by key and just kind of experimented with different velocities, randomly firing to see which notes are the most stable. And then I actually one note stretched those specific notes. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to switch from default to one note stretch here and just kind of go around and see if we can find a note that has the least amount of variance from round robin to round robin. Yeah, I remember this E5, I use that on a couple of them. So that's a really particularly stable note where I would feel comfortable one note stretching that and you can actually play some chords and some cool stuff. So yeah, that's just a quick tip if you want to kind of rein in the amount of variances. You know, some are definitely a little more stable than others, but that really is the character of the instrument. So, you know, I would say even that note that we chose has a fair amount of variance. So all I'm saying is don't buy this thinking that you're going to get something that you can rip on all your piano choppy stuff on it. That's not what it's meant for. Keeping that variance in mind, you can use it to your advantage as well, maybe blending it with another part on another instrument that's not quite as varied from note to note. An example of that might be using a synthesizer or an ARP and having it kind of move the pitch around underneath the more dominant part. So let's just check out the Juniper 8 library here and see if I can find an ARP that's pretty cool. Cool, so, so here's kind of a plucky timbre from the 8 library, and I do have the ultra deep sampled version, so this may be more of a thing if you don't have the ultra deep sampled version, but I just wanted to show you what it would be like to kind of, you know, match a pluckier tone from water pipes and a pluckier tone from a synth that maybe doesn't have quite the pitch variation that water pipes does. Let's match the octave. And let's do ourselves a favor and give us some release so that we can. <laughs> and you see it adds kind of a nice warmth, beef, and sort of moving around type effect underneath the more dominant synth layer. And you actually end up with something pretty neat. Throw it through a reverb. Yeah. Let's see what that sounds like. I mean, that's beautiful. And the pitch wavering is less noticeable, but it definitely adds some life and almost kind of an acoustic element to the synth sound that I really, really like. I'm almost just curious, let me do that same kind of playing example, but just open this up to the whole full water pipes part, not picking ones that are like specifically more stable. I just wanna hear if we can even accentuate that variance even more. Yeah, so it's less noticeable. If you guide the ear with something that is slightly more stable, it actually just adds this really, really nice, resonant, beautiful, warm sound underneath whatever you're doing. 
I'm sure it would blend well with the piano too. I mean, we gotta try that. So that's literally just the part plus staccato piano with a little tone adjustment. Did I even put a reverb on it? I don't think, oh, I did. Oh yeah, there's reverb on it, okay. But still, I mean, it's just, it's a blend master of a part and it's just really, really fun to play with and mix with other stuff. Anything that's plucky, resonant, just wanna add some warmth, some variance to it. Water pipes is a really, really useful way to go. So yeah, that's a quick overview of water pipes. We looked at the part, some of the programs, some tips for approaching making your own programs and some really fun stuff you can blend it with. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's definitely not gonna be your everyday daily driver sound paint part, but man, I mean, it is really unique. It is really awesome. And anything you wanna blend it with, it's gonna give it something special for sure. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you next time. This is Shimmy signing out. Take care.